machine broke down and got a new machine so he of course he had to one up me and get the really cool looking gray one with uh what's it, is it called the s of the plus or i can't remember se plus, SE plus. I check them those wheels out and then he went and got the maxis uh big horn mine are the big horn 2.0s but shane just went with uh original maxis which is what i'm gonna do next time they've definitely got more meat on them bigger lugs uh the only drawback would be i guess is that they're heavier is what they say but you can see a difference on those and mine I feel bad i didn't wash mine it's gonna be feeling embarrassed to ride with this one but anyway um this is his he's taking it out for what did you do 30 miles shane or something so 30 miles is all it's got on it. We're going to try to get the rest of the 100 miles and the 10 hours on it today. So anyway, we're going to head out uh, toward Birch Creek and have some fun. So we got some pretty thick fog. We're hoping it breaks eventually, but not a lot of visibility. That car in front of us is not that far out. Here comes one the other direction. You don't even see it till right on you. The antenna's got a big ice clod forming on it. We'll see how we do. Well, we popped out of the fog, and uh, it's nice and clear out here, so it looks like it'll be a good day for riding. See Diamond Peak over there. Well, we made it out here. We're getting ready to unload. Got a bunch of ice peeled up. The fog was so bad that it just froze everything. It's like 24 degrees, according to the truck's thermometer, my handle grips. I need to get some of them heaters for sure. Well, I got ice all on my mirror. I don't know if it'll show. Kind of see there, but everything's iced up. That fog was thick and a lot of moisture. Anyway, we're letting them warm up. I think we're gonna air Shane's tires down some when he, he had discount tire put them on. And he said, it rides pretty rough and he got home checked the tire pressure and they were 30 pounds so they, they pumped them up way too much so we're gonna see if we can get it adjusted right today get them similar to the to mine and then we can kind of compare the 2.0's uh, ride quality to the original Bighorn uh, Maxxis tire ride quality so we'll see how it does all right. Well, Shane, you go first. Just go here, take a left, and. Okay. The new bike looks awful good. Beautiful morning. That's Diamond Peak right there. In front of us. quite a ways we got out of the fog and sun's out shining bikes are thawing out and melting all the ice off of them uh, so far we've noticed that uh, Shane's running about eight pounds in his uh, tires and I think mine we checked only one of them but it was like five and uh, so maybe later we'll check the rest of them and see I haven't been using a gauge on it but I haven't had to adjust my tires since I mounted them. I had one slow leak that I got where I had a nail in it from the neighborhood. But since then I haven't adjusted it. And they've held air and I think they ride nice and smooth. I think they're wearing good. I mean, I, mine are definitely wore down more than his, but he's barely put them on. He's got the ones that have the bigger lugs on them to begin with. It's a heavier constructed tire. I think it has heavier sidewalls too, but we're kind of curious how it'll ride if we get similar pressure. But I think even his shocks being on this brand new bike are stiffer. Anyway, um, you can see the fog down there where we came up out of. That's really, that's a big valley and you can't even see into it because the fog's laying in there. 
that fog or cloud. Maybe it's just a cloud. But I think it's that freezing fog. It warmed up some. We've got a pretty landscape. There's the Diamond Peak. I think that's about 12,000, some 11 or 12,000. And it kind of tapers off over here. Well, we're going to turn around. We came out here doing a little exploring. Kind of cool looking, all the fog in the valley. And uh, it's bright and clear up here. But we're having a good time. We're going to go back and check out a little canyon that we saw back there a ways. See how far we can go up in that canyon by Diamond. Fun, uh, definitely a lot more snow right here. Yeah. Well, I think oh, maybe a little more. They'll usually have a little turnaround thing. Yeah. There's a truck been in here. Should be able to turn around fine. Yeah. Go ahead. The manual says that you're only supposed to give it half throttle during the first 10 hours or 100 miles. So unfortunately we were in some good snow but had to kind of take it easy. Alright, we're going to drop back down in. Looks like we're going to head right back into the fog bank. We're hoping it's not all still filled with ice moisture but probably is we're gonna go across the highway to the other side of those mountains over there and I can feel it on my face it is cold and wet
disappears pretty quick. There, pretty much gone right there. creek froze over Shane just drove across it without it breaking see what I'm a little fatter and broke yet <laughs> it broke when I did that it was cracking you can hear it cracking when I started to cross <laughs> into the canyon where it gets a little more even more rocky and Shane, 
this is where I parked right here. But let's go. I think we can go up here with our four wheelers. buildings they're all caved in I think this is part of that same stuff that they did up there by Spring Mountain up near Gilmore about the same time frame which is my understanding late 1800s and early 1900s up to well up to almost the mid 1900s I think 1930 something Shane this is where I parked right here but let's go I think we can go up here with our four-wheelers I'm in high right now but it might go to low buildings they're all caved in I think this is part of that same stuff that they did up there by Spring Mountain up near Gilmore about the same time frame which is my understanding late 1800s and early 1900s up to well up to almost the mid 1900s I think 1930 something
rock right there. They drilled a hole right through it. See the hole through that rock? <clears throat> drill, rock drill. It's quite a view up here. Pretty cool. Mountains across the way, that's that diamond point we were looking at earlier. You can see it, but clouds and fog still way down in there. Here comes Shane. We'll go back and look at all that stuff, Shane. I just wanted to come up here and that's up above where we are um, riding. To me, it looks like they need to do a Mount Rushmore right now. All those rocks. Here's some sort of chute that they used to use in the mining operation. If anybody knows what it is, put it down in the comments. I know they looks like they had piles of ore up here or the rock they were working and get it over here onto this deck and I don't know how they got it, there must have been more to it but it goes down through them trees and uh, we'll go look at the bottom side of it but anyway that's kind of cool old oven One of the old buildings that kind of looks like it may have had a sod roof on it. At one point before it caved in, kind of see it over there. Looks like it. And here's the this one. Forrest was asking if I thought they had windows, actual glass windows, and I think so. Nothing left of them now, but I would guess they did. What's that, Shane? Oh, is there? See the old stove jack? Interesting construction. This is like a concrete well of some sort. I don't know what that is. It's all caved in, but it looks like it's got concrete around it and the part of that house cantilevers over it 
See the chinking mud that they use between those uh, timbers? Looks like they left the bark on some of that. The header's a little warped now. <laughs> Our thought was also wondering if this was just one big window. You can see where these are cut this way for an opening. It's at the same height and elevation as those other ones. But this one would have been a real long, real big wide opening. Another doorway over here. See some rock in the back of that. And door going from that main room to this room or this main room to that one whatever it kind of goes I know I gotta watch out for nails and be careful we don't want nothing falling in on us get a little cubby back here of sorts and they had like a little some sort of little thing there it's crazy Well, that was just like a little uh, rack or something over there. This, get over here, it's interesting. It, it goes up and out like some sort of little flue. What it would have been for. Anyway, did quite good work with the rock. Shane was just noticing that that's actually like some cedar shake shingles. Up on that, what used to be the room. Old uh, box spring or mattress thing sitting out here. Holly, who's a mattress or box spring expert? How old is that? Who knows? Something. Look at how they got those together. That's pretty impressive. So this is the outs outside of your log and then they've come in yeah. and they've taken three inches off yeah they wanted it square yeah you know so they could mama mm -hmm. wants a square log well you wonder if they had a any kind of coating on it or if it was just the wood like this i don't know that's the other side of it Amazing what they did. Shane and I were talking how tough these dudes must have been living out here and building this kind of stuff with only old hand tools.
way out, we saw something kind of cool. There were some bighorn sheep and some mule deer all mixed together. It was fun watching them. There was rams and ewes, uh, and the rut was on, so it was kind of fun to watch the rams chase the ewes around and uh, battle with each other a little bit. This guy was definitely letting his buddy know who was in charge. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.